Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Ned Belvance, Ned1313 on Twitter. Welcome to Daily Check-In for May 26, 2020. I hope you all had a great Memorial Day if you're in the U.S. Or if you're not in the U.S., I hope you had a great Monday yesterday. I enjoyed my day off, got a little time and fun out in the sun, and now it's back to the grind, whatever that means. So welcome, everyone. This is the daily live stream that I do at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time every weekday. And today is a special day because it's Terraform Tuesday. It's also Taco Tuesday. I, I just like Tuesdays. Tuesdays, you know, we're, we're elevating Tuesdays to a higher plane of existence. Uh, a couple housekeeping items before I talk uh, too much about Terraform. First, uh, Thank you, everyone who has been subscribing. The subscriber numbers are slowly approaching that 100 mark, and that's what I'm really hoping for. Also, uh, Friday is Ask Me Anything. I already have a few questions in the queue, so I'm excited to talk about those. But if you have a question for me, a burning question you need the answer to, submit it to me on Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever makes sense for you. You can send it by Carrier Pigeon if you can find one, and I will answer it on Friday. So that's exciting. Cool. Before we get started on Terraform certification, I just want to check in with you. How are you doing? How are things going? We're, uh, we're almost in June, which is crazy. I've been doing this for almost two months now. I can't believe that. I'm rolling through so many different topics. And you'd think that the well's starting to run dry and you would be incorrect because not only do I have my own ideas, but people have been submitting ideas. So that's great. Keep them coming. Please, uh, if you have any topic that you'd like me to cover, whether it's Terraform or something else, send it to me and I will cover it uh, over the course of the next you know, few months. This thing just keeps going. Uh, you also note, uh, if you're watching the video and not listening to the podcast, I now have a net in the cloud sign that I'm pretty excited about. I think it turned out real nice. Uh, I'm hooking it up to an extension cord soon, so it'll light up blue. Uh, it was pretty awesome. So I just you know, if you're if you're watching the video feed and you're like, hey, he's got a look, he's got a fish and he's got a sign now. That's right. We're we're doing some stuff with the background. That is fun. Now let's talk about the Terraform certification. All right. So I've already done two videos about well, one about the Terraform certification specifically. So I'll include that in the show notes. You might want to go back and listen to or watch that video. It talks about the Terraform certification at a high level. What are the goals? How was it structured by HashiCorp? And a little bit about how I was involved in the development of the exam. It also talks a little bit about the study guide that I wrote for it. So I'm not going to rehash all that on this one. But I have had a number of people ask me, hey, I would like another video about the Terraform certification. I'm not sure exactly what they want me to dig into. So I decided to dig into some other things. I also wrote a blog post recently that is all about the certification and also has some preview of what's in the guide. So I'll include a link to that as well. And I did another video that's about taking an exam at home. And that's important because the only way to take the exam for the Terraform certification is, well, I won't say at home, you can take it wherever, but it is remote in nature. So you don't go to a testing center to take it. You take it through this remote proctored exam process. So that's, there's a video that's all about how to prep for remote proctored exams. I'll include all that in the show notes just a level set around the Terraform certification. This is an associate level certification. It's not meant for the expert, the person that's been using Terraform for the last five years and knows all the ins and outs and the gotchas of using it. If you are that person, I mean, study a little bit, but you can probably walk in and pass the exam because you're not, I mean, the level that they're targeting here is someone who is new to Terraform, who has used it in a development environment a little bit, you know, tinkered around, has some understanding of the core concepts, hasn't moved on to the expert level usage of Terraform. That's the person they're targeting for this associate level cert. Somebody did ask me, is there going to be a professional level cert? And there is. There's going, I don't know if it's going to be called professional, but there will be a higher level cert beyond this, but they thought it was important to get out that associate level cert first. So that's important to know. Now, how is this whole thing organized? Now, if you can see my screen, and I'm assuming that you can, let me just zoom it in a little bit. Here are all the exam objectives. Before I talk about those, it's important. One of the things that I really like about this exam 
is that it's only $70.50. I say only. I, I know for some people that might be a bit of a stretch. And, you know, hopefully uh, you can just scrape it up. But if you compare it to the cost of some other exams out there, I'm thinking of the Microsoft exams or the AWS, those generally range 150 to 300, depending on the exam. This is less than half that. I don't know why it's such a weird price of $70.50. But when you consider the, the cost, it's really not that bad. And it's good for two years. So this is not a perpetual cert. You're going to have to re-up in two years. But that's probably good because Terraform is going to change a lot in two years. Who knows? They might actually get to 1.0 at some point. <laughs> so that's good to know. If we scroll down, we have all the exam objectives. And this is really nice that they have just broken out. Here's the high level exam objective. And here's all of the enabling objectives below it. That makes it a lot easier to focus in on what areas you don't know a ton about and study up on those specific areas. So let's just pull one out here that we might want to dive deeper into. Uh, let's see, we've got implement and maintain state. That's a good one. So why don't we just talk about that a little bit. If you've only tinkered around with Terraform a little bit, you have created a state file, but you might not be fully aware of what that state file is doing and how you might want to protect it. So the first thing they want you to know, though 7A of enabling objective is describe the default local backend. And if you're like, well, what's that mean? What's a backend? Okay, now we've got somewhere to start because you need to understand what backends are and how state is related to backends. So you can go directly into the Terraform documentation and look at remote state and backends and start gaining some knowledge. The local backend is the one that Terraform uses by default, and it creates that local backend using your local file system and the directory where your configuration is stored. It just creates a TF state file. That's the default behavior, but you can alter that default behavior. So what it outlines here is additional objectives to understand how to move away from using the local backend that you might use in a development environment and how to now use a backend that is remote from your workstation because that's important for collaboration and also protecting your state because state's kind of important and understanding that you're going to have to handle different authentication methods depending on where your backend is. Let's say you decide to put your backend in S3. All right, well, you need to be able to authenticate to AWS to store data in S3 and write and retrieve that data. Okay, what else is in here? Describe the remote state storage mechanisms and supported standard backends. Okay, so we want to store our state data somewhere. What are those remote state storage mechanisms? Where can it be stored? You might want to know some of the different supported platforms, especially the most popular ones. AWS S3 is an obvious example of that. You can use Azure Storage. That's another example. You can use MySQL. I don't know how popular that is, but it is an option. And then probably the one that Terraform's most interested in you knowing about is the Terraform Cloud remote state option. So kind of have all of those in mind. What else do we have? Describe the effect of Terraform refresh on state. State changes over time as the infrastructure that it is meant to bind to changes. So when Terraform runs plan, it does a refresh on state to see if anything has changed about the managed resources in the actual infrastructure versus what's in the state data. When else does it do a refresh? It does it a bunch of other times, and you can also force that. So what does that do to state? That's an important thing to know. What else do we have? Describe backend block in configuration and best practices for partial configurations. So that's a little confusing. <laughs> that objective may not be crystal clear. What they're actually talking about here is if you do want to define a backend using Terraform, you'll put Terraform and then backend. And then within the backend configuration block, you may have a lot of configuration information or very little. When you have very little, that's called a partial configuration. Why would you do that? You would do a partial configuration because a lot of the time what you need to put into that config is authentication information and storing your username and password in clear text in a configuration is probably it's not a great idea. So instead you can submit those values at runtime 
when you run Terraform in it, which is what initializes the backend that you've created. And then the last one is understand secret management in state files. The thing that's important to understand here is state files store their information in plain text. It's basically a JSON file. And some of the information that's in that state file may be of a sensitive nature. So you have a couple options. First, you're going to want to try to strip that out as much as possible. Wherever you can avoid storing secret and sensitive information in state, probably do that. But sometimes you can't. Sometimes that has to be in there. Sometimes you need an API key or something else to be stored in state. So then in those cases, ideally, you would store your state somewhere that it can be encrypted. So understanding that if you can't pull it out of state and it has to be in state data, all right, now how can I store my state somewhere where it will be encrypted at rest and in transit? S3 does it, Azure Storage does it, there's a bunch of other options that do it. So you know, very briefly, that is some of the information that you need to understand about implementing and maintaining state, which is the high level objective that has all these enabling objectives underneath it. So what I would do if I were studying, I would use this basically as a checklist. Start with the high level thing and then go through each enabling objective and ask yourself honestly, how well do I know this topic? If you know it really well, you could kind of skip it. If you are, have questions or are unsure what even the enabling objective means, all right, now it's time to dig in a little deeper to familiarize yourself with it more. That's what I would recommend if I was going through and trying to study up for this. And I would also do a lot of hands-on actual messing around with Terraform and not just reading the docs because, at least for me, I tend to remember things a lot better when I've done something and it failed and I did it again and it failed and I did it again and it worked versus just reading it in the docs. That, that just doesn't, it doesn't stick as well for me. So those are my recommendations for the certification. Like I said, I'm gonna include a bunch of links in the, in the notes for this video and also in the show notes for the podcast that include the other videos that I've done as well as the study guide that I wrote and the blog post that uh, I wrote. So I will include all of that in the notes. If you have more questions or a suggestion for the next Terraform Tuesday, you know what? Hit me up I'm on Twitter, Ned1313. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. Pretty easy to find me there. Uh, and until tomorrow, stay healthy and stay safe, everybody. Thanks.